you think about 3F, don't think about a scan. Think about a system that converts the information stored in your film in digital information stored in a digital file. With 3F and FlexColor, scans and digital camera files share the same workflow. Modify, export settings, save and batch. Exactly like a raw digital file, the 3F will remain untouched. You don't necessarily need to be an expert scanning operator to set your files. You'll see in the preview exactly what you would see in Photoshop, and you can tweak it according to your needs. Hello, welcome to the screencast. I'm David Barranc and I'll guide you throughout this first basic tutorial about 3F and FlexColor. Let's start having a look at the FlexColor interface. So you have a toolbar on the left and a big preview area. Actually, this is much more than a low-res preview. You're able to zoom, pan and see very closely what you would see in Photoshop. Details, you see the precise reading of the RGB values and so on. This first makes FlexColor different from traditional scanning software where you are only allowed to work in a small size rendered preview image. Just before going any further, how to open a 3F file. Not by double clicking, not dragging the icon on the toolbar, but within FlexColor you have a file browser that you access clicking this button here. You can now see thumbnails in this window. You pick the folder you want here and it shows you the previews. You can choose three display sizes, small, medium and large. And now if you double click it opens the 3F on the main flex color window. Now a 3F file is a 3F file is a 3F file no matter whether the original was a color negative, positive, black and white whatsoever. The software does on the fly the inversion. So, for instance, this is a black and white negative. Here you have a color positive. Here a color negative. And they all look fine as you would expect. By the way, if you open a 3F from, say, a color negative in Photoshop, and I will suggest you to do so later on, you'll have a glance on what a 3F actually is. Let's see. So a true recording of the film. Got it? Fine. While in flax color, it looks positive. Being a real processing environment, you have all the tools you may need to output a TIFF file. So first levels, then curves, selective color correction, sharpening and dust and scratches removal, all is floating windows. But we'll have a look at them later on. You can easily adjust all the parameters you need to. Say we want here a snappier image with a bit more contrast and uh, maybe a warmer color. All the changes are applied instantaneously and you can either work perceptively, so relying on your eyes, or if you are more pre-press oriented, on numbers reading the densitometer here. When you are done, choose the most appropriate setting for your output needs say RGB 16 bits define a crop and click the Save button. This makes FlexColor to output a TIFF file that you can open in Photoshop for further processing. This way you choose exactly as the scanner operator would have done all these scan settings so you are actually the scanner operator without the need to buy and own a top-class scanner that's 3F workflow and it's that easy. Let's now briefly review the most common flex color tools that you're likely to use. First, there's the crop tool here that work pretty much the same as in Photoshop. Mind you, if you happen to use the auto levels, this little A icon here, it works on the cropped image only, not the whole picture. 
you have a floating info palette which allows you to pin up to five points in the image and that's one more than Photoshop allows for reading the RGB values and keep an eye on color cast that may appear. Then there's a multiple zoom window. While flex color shows you a very 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 good preview it may be helpful to work on the global image and keep an eye on a 100% particular or maybe two or three. You probably already know about levels and curves but here they are. Levels you have all the RGB sliders they work as you would expect but the middle ones I'll talk to you about this in the advanced tutorial basically they won't affect luminosity and you can launch the auto levels from here as well it's just the same. You can also set the black and white point via eyedroppers and use a gray eyedropper to set gray balance if you want. The curves dialog is a bit different from the Photoshop one. Please forget about the brightness and contrast sliders here, don't use them and I'll be back to shadow depth in a minute. First you have R, G, B curves plus C, M and Y that you can use if you feel more comfortable with inks rather than light. Actually CMY curves are simply the inverse of RGB so they aren't true CMY key curves and that's the why there is no key, no, no black ink at all. Second, when you set a point it's not a point on the curve but it's a point that push or pull the curve without touching it. It's kind of a magnetic effect. This is something that you have to accustom to but it helps in drawing a smoother curve. You see that when I place, move and release a point a flex color calculates on the fly the values so you're constantly looking at the exact high-res scan. Now we are at the shadow depth which could be better called shadow detail. The slider controls the amount of lightening in the shadow. So for instance, you see how much more uh, open they are now. And by the way, you would see only a noisy mess here if the scanner weren't a professional one. That's true 16 bits and high D max, which translates in more information in the film's denser zones. You can decide to exploit it or not, but that's an artistic decision and it's up to you. Nevertheless, shadow detail is here. You have then selective color correction. You can choose a color range or pick up one from the image. Then add RGB or its inverse CMY. You can also boost the overall saturation. Finally, you have the sharpening noise removal window. Here Unsharp Mask has an amount, so how much stronger the sharpening effect will be, a radius, so how much widespread the halos will be, a threshold for grain, which is similar to a threshold in Photoshop Unsharp Mask filter, and the threshold for shadows, which is a nice feature that limits the sharpening effect where it's less noticeable, namely in the very very dark part of the picture. Flex Touch is the name for Dustin Scratcher's removal. I suggest you to work at 100% zoom and experiment. My suggested value range is around 30, 40. It washes out most of the dust issues, especially those annoying white dots, while keeping even the smallest detail. If you want to know, my default value is 38. One of the most exciting things that 3F system allows you to do is raw retouching. I know that retouching, I mean cleaning a picture from scratches, dust, hair and similar isn't that exciting usually but please follow me. In the good old days when there were skill scanner operators, drum scanners and expensive hardware you did scan a piece of film and you had to retouch the file in order to get a clean image. If something went wrong or for some reason you had to rescan the fill, the cleaning must be done again. You may now be familiar with the concept of digital raw files cleaning, file coming from a, a digital camera I mean with nowadays raw processing software before it wasn't possible at all. 3F is the only system that allows you to open in Photoshop a raw scan, retouch it and save it again as a 3F. 
this way your digital scan is forever clean and you won't worry about it anymore it's just like cleaning the real film let's see this in practice I have a beautiful picture with an issue here and here I could process the 3F, output a TIFF, and then retouch the TIFF file, but it won't definitely solve the problem. Next time I'll have to process the 3F, same retouching to do in the TIFF. The more appropriate way to work is as follows. Let's open the 3F straight in Photoshop. And you won't be surprised by the fact that it's a negative image. You already know that the 3F is just a raw, digitalized version of your film. Okay, now you have the entire Photoshop arsenal to get rid of small imperfection. I simply pick the healing tool, brush here and there, save and close. And that's done. Now if I open the 3F again in flex color and let me switch image and then get back to it just to be sure it rewrites the file, what well, is just clean. I can export it 100 times with 100 different settings and all the 100 TIFFs will be clean. Obvious may it sound to you, used to modern digital camera files and processing, 3F is the only and first system that allows you to digital scan cleaning. And ever since year 2000, long before digital cameras and raw developing software could even work decently. Mind you, when you install FlexColor software, it automatically adds a plugin to Photoshop, and that's something you need in order to properly save a 3F. Let's talk about file settings. You can access a number of presets from this drop down list here. You see, they are mostly named after film brands, and when you select one, it loads a group of settings curves, sharpenings, and so on. So each preset carries its own group of settings. You can try them, then tweak them accordingly to your needs. It's possible to create your own preset. I made one called X5 negative, which zeroes pretty much everything when I want to start from scratch. Plus, there's image specific settings that you can save, which are kind of snapshots. So again, FlexColor records all the curves, level adjustments that you made on that specific image, so that you can make different versions and recall them easily from the drop down list. We will see that these image specific saved settings are actually saved within the 3F so each time you open the file they're there it's not like Photoshop history that vanishes as you close the file now let's talk a bit about managing files we've seen how to open a 3F via its file browser when you select a thumbnail you have an interesting info button here which we want to try this window shows file name, creation date, scanner used, dimension, then copyright information and keywords and a caption. So many useful metadata you may want to add to your scans. Plus, in the drop down menu, there's an history item. Here are listed all the status, the snapshot that has been saved that we've just talked about, and that we can recall if we're in need. Finally, it's possible for you to batch apply all the settings or a subset of settings from one 3F to as many 3Fs as you want so they can share the same, I don't know, sharpening, levels, or crop, or both, or everything. Let me briefly show you this. I pick this image and apply a demo curve to lighten. Then I switch back to the thumbnails view and select all the similar 3Fs and apply the curve adjustment only to each one of these. FlexColor now processes the 3Fs metadata and then when I open one of these 3Fs I find the curve applied and the preset is on the list. Again, you may be used to this kind of stuff with files coming from digital camera today, but let me stress this one more time. There's nothing around like this for film scan. It's just the only system that allows you this. Back to our setting stuff now. One thing that you may want to do, for instance, is to set the zoom to a lower percentage and maybe a stronger sharpening 
to batch output small files for a quick review in Photoshop. Here I apply these settings. Then I select an output as TIFF in batch and this is one thing that I can do my selected images and flex color processes them. Then you can always come back and output the selected ones with a larger resolution and appropriate sharpening. The key concept is that all these values, curves, levels, sharpening, crop, everything, they are never definitive. They are stored as metadata in the 3F, so group of settings can be stored and saved as metadata as well, and then easily recalled as different versions of the same 3F. That's all we have time for in this basic tutorial. Much more stuff in the next advanced tutorial, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Goodbye from the hub. See you next time.